In this video we'll go into a little more detail on <clears throat> what I did to squeeze out the uh, the final bit of error that's in a drive like this, barn door. This is the uh, stepper version of the uh, Astro Kit design I came up with back in the 80s. <clears throat> Still works. Here we are, 2012. And uh, <clears throat> this particular drive was probably, I don't know of a better, a better one with uh, equal accuracy considering what went into it. This one is uh, about the best you could find. And uh, what I did to get that kind of accuracy is all about testing. And I got kind of tired of running film, which got kind of expensive. I might have maybe changed the distance from the hinge to the uh, to the rod, and of course uh, you'd have to go through film. But what I did was I came up with this arrangement. What we have here is a uh, teleconverter. That's this piece right here. And uh, there are others made today. This one I got this back in the 80s. It was really nice. It had a, a mounting mounting foot. I could put a nice lens on here. And over here I have a uh, guiding eyepiece from uh, this one is from University Optics 12.5 uh, this has dual crosshair in it and in the body of this we have a 3.5 a 3.5 uh, three Barlow so you get really good magnification on this and taking a look at the lens this particular lens is a 400 millimeter obviously a mirror lens uh, 400 millimeter 5.6. I've used this one uh, quite a bit and you can see some examples of what this lens can do if you go to uh, Flickr and put in Astro Kits in the Flickr search and you'll you'll come up with still pictures of this arrangement and uh, or the drive I should say and uh, some of the photos I've taken and this this drive will work with this 400 millimeter lens However, with this magnification uh, from the teleconverter, it brings it up to 1200, which is really pushing it. But uh, for test purposes, it's good. I could watch, I could observe right in the eyepiece how the drive is performing. In fact, if I sneak in there a little bit, you can almost see it. There it is. There the cross is. So the idea is to uh, <clears throat> do the polar alignment, which is another issue. Get that done, which is. That's a, I'll make another video on that. Uh, you got your a good tripod all set up, and then once you've got everything running, the motor's running, and the idea is to get a star in the uh, in the center box <clears throat> and keep it in there, or better yet, keep it on uh, one of the intersections of one of the two lines, and and just turn on the drive and see what happens, and. Uh, you could see if a star, if the motor is slow, you'll see the star dragging off to one side. If the motor is fast, it'll pull away to the other. If the polar alignment is off, it'll go up or down. So this, it really lets you ring out the, the, uh, whatever little flaws are left in in your drive. And in, and in this case right now, this drive is set up where, once I'm polar aligned, it's just rock solid. It doesn't move at all. So I could I could keep it running. And uh, running and running, and, and it, uh, I could go almost as long as whatever the month I have on the rod. I've got to go for quite a while. Uh, then, then you start getting into things like atmospheric refraction. That's really what limits you. But <clears throat> if you're using a, uh, I, I have some enlargements made. That's what these are. These were, uh, that's Comet Hayukataki, and uh, 1996, I believe, and. Uh, I have an enlargement in there where I got really in close like that with the 400 millimeter lens and it came out really nice. And then uh, this is a 50 millimeter and uh, this is film, you know, you, this, you can get in close, this, you can't, I can't get in too close with this video, I can't refocus it, but I can tell you that there's whatever level of detail you want to look at it, there's no trailing at all. So it works good. In other videos I'll make, I'll talk about uh, the overall design of the drive itself, uh, why I chose this stepper, where this gear came from, uh, some of the features, you could disengage it, 
if you lose battery power you could just disengage the motor and work it by hand and with pretty good accuracy and, uh, and then of course to me one of the key things for accuracy is you really really need good polar alignment that's the best thing you could do aside from the mechanical aspect of it you really need you really need good polar alignment this scope is from astrophysics it's their PAS PASO PASILL it's an older version but the new one should work too and you'll get astrophysics grade polar alignment with this and that's what I ended up doing I took a couple of uh, <coughs> ordinary finder rings uh, let me see if I can get around on this side maybe you can see yeah those are ordinary finder rings I still have a bunch of those and what I did was I cut them down tapped the hole right smack in the middle and uh, just mounted it and, and it works fine and cat doesn't cats complaining she doesn't like me paying attention to this stuff uh, so I'll get into more aspects of this later and if you really want accuracy polar align and then gets make an arrangement like this of some sort I don't know if, they, if you can get anything like this now but there are other teleconverters and other maybe s small telescopes which, but you need that focal length you need about 1200 millimeter or so with a guiding eyepiece and then you could really really get in there now this little telescope here in case you're wondering that's just uh, to help uh, this is so strong I need this to to help me uh, pick, uh, pick a target but uh, this type of scope this has a crosshair in it but it really doesn't give that real real high-end accuracy you need uh, it just doesn't do it so then I ended up going with the astrophysics type scope which is great and uh, I could even put a, a camera on here if I wanted to shoot while I was testing, which I sometimes did. I consider this like a, t a test platform. And uh, that's it for now.